important part of the model in which we are learning. This is just waves, this is your DNA. Um, everything I'm doing here is microcosm, macrocosm, and this is how all waves function. Wave contains the word Eve in it, and we will find that uh, wave me Eve means wave, and Adam means pulse. Uh, Adam or Atum is a pulse, it's a magnetic pulse, and waves are the transverse waves which produce letters, which then go on to produce form in creation. As the Jews say, uh, letters have made, Jehovah used letters, the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, to make creation. Uh, the Pythagoreans, on the other hand, said it's a mathematical universe and the universe is made by numbers. But both are true. It's called um, gematria. Gematria gives value to letters. So A will always be 1. B will always be two, etc., etc. So gematria is the source of everything, letters and numbers. An atom represents numbers, and let Eve represents letters. Atom is quantities, and let and Eve letters are qualities. The universe is about quantities and qualities. So we're going to find that Atum is the key word. Now, the reason I'm doing these lessons is so that you folk out there who uh, love syncretism and want to um, get out there and help people in your community, all you need is a whiteboard and some markers. You'll need four colours, black, red, green and blue. And you can put a a poster out around town that you'll be teaching and um, doing so by dono donations if you have to hire a place and you can start teaching this stuff. This stuff is so empowering. Once you learn this, um, you open doors and portals in your world which you never thought you could possibly open because it shows you how the universe thinks. We're living in a thinking universe uh, and a knowing universe. Universe mind knowing, universe mind thinking. These waves show the thought waves of the creator and they are elect electromagnetic in nature. And we're going to see that um, these waves have produced a language and this language is based on atoms which gives you the word etymology. Etymology is nothing but the science of atoms the truth in words. And words, word has D-O-R in it. And that door, T and D are interchangeable, of course. Uh, that is the torus field. which is the word of God, because this here, as I'll show, the Taurus field is the word of God. It's la palabra de Dios. And palabra, remember that is rooted in uh, bowl. So, I'll get back to this. I'll write that there as a note. <clears throat> but what I want to say is, there are three words, and these are the three parent words of all words. They are the roots of all words. Put it that way. One of those words is atum. The other word is hyperbola, which is this hourglass inside of every donut, D-O-N, of every torus field, which is an atom. An atom is nothing but a hyperbola and a torus field. This is the torus field. And every torus field is red shift, blue shift. So let's have some fun and go right around and complete our DNA strands. Yes. Okay, so what we've got here, you can see clearly, this is blue shifted. 
This is the green heart chakra. This is the center. And this is red shifted. Your lower chakras of your torso are nothing but a torus. Okay? So if the head of the human being were here, this would be the apple, the apples of Apollo that make up these little golden apples that it is said in ancient um, theology that everything is the fruit of God, little apples, little golden apples or golden eggs, etc. So what I've done is to make it simple is to reduce these words down to ton, bull and tor. They are the key words, folks. These are the three key words. I've changed bowl into bull. And you have more fun with it when you do that. But remember, all the vowels are interchangeable. And basically, three other interchangeables are important at this stage. T and D are interchangeable. M and N are interchangeable. Not only in function, but also in sound. You see, the letters T and D, they always turn up to be two and four. D is the fourth letter of the universe. T is the twin, no, D is the fourth le uh, letter in most languages of the universe. Sorry, T. Funny, it turns out to be the twentieth letter of uh, the English alphabet. Isn't that interesting? That the letter T <laughs> should be the twentieth letter of the alphabet. And isn't it funny that when you go through the alphabet, you get to Q. Then you get Q R S T U. Now, does that sound a little bit Christic to you, like that Christ is hiding in the alphabet? Well, it is, and this is deliberate. You'll find this is the same in the runes, in the Germanic languages. In the Hebrew alphabet, those are the four last letters Kaf, Resh, Shin, um, Shim and Tav. Isn't that funny that Christ should be the four last letters of the Hebrew alphabet and Christo is hiding in our alphabet. So when you look at these letters and their values, it's very important to understand the power of the letter T and D, the two interchangeables. So whenever you see Tom, you can also change that to a D, and you can change that M to an N, because they are interchangeable. And the vowels are interchangeable. And you can have them switched around and mixed around, but they will always turn up in all the languages in the same way and mean the same thing. This is why most of our words end in ton, bull, and tor. For instance, creator. Actor, distributor, transistor, also TR words, TIR words, or TER, like sister. These all come from the Taurus field. Okay, so there's many versions of this. There's even door, as I said. Door is time, order, and gold, doro, dorado. But it's also the door, because these are doorways, portals. These atoms are portals. So here you can have uh, just, um, words that end in door. Um, anyone know off the top of their minds? Any, any words that end in door, like distributor, um, Matador, okay, that's a fine word. Mata is backwards for atam, to kill. Because when you get an atom, when you get a T-shaped tor torso, you are having an anatomy. Tomb 
This is a tomb. It's in the shape of a tomb. You have an anatomy because light gets entrapped in a tomb. And that's why this, this important word is so important. You can have it as Tom, if you like, as well. And it's very important that it is Tom. Because Tom means twin, whereas atom means one. So what you find that atom is nothing but the numbering system of the universe. All odd numbers are masculine. All eve, even numbers... A feminine. Okay? So that's why two Pythagoreans used to spit on Pythagoras used to spit on the ground whenever the, the, the number two was mentioned. Not because he hated the word two, but because of knowing that this is a this is a killing of our these bodies that we have, this is the baptism of death. We have come here to die. We are not living. We're not considered living, true living is to be unconditioned and to leave these bodies. So that's why these cadabra means cadaver, cadaver, right? So this is a cadaver. And abra, bra, is just another way of saying bull because R and L are interchangeable. Now, this is where I need to stop. R and L... And I should have put that as red. We're going to take a little detour here, guys. This is very important. These are the two most important of all the interchangeable letters. And believe you me, if you remember this, you will do better than any student in esoteric sciences. If you remember that they are interchangeable and that R is for red and L is for blue. L is in the letter blue deliberately. R is for right turning and L is for left turning. L is the number 12 because it is the circ L. The psych L. And the ancients knew that every circle must be divided in 12 segments of 30 degrees, of 360 degrees, in order for that to be considered to be um, scientifically a circle, because 12 is the only number that divides, and 360 degrees, the only number that that is able to describe and explain cycles and circles. It is the perfect numbering system. So it's very interesting that this is 12 in most languages, Hebrew, Greek, the runes, and English, just to name a few. And this always turns out to be 18, 666. Radiation, gravitation. Blue shift, in any torus field, blue is compressing. It is convergent centripetal. Convergent centripetal. And it is left turning. Blue is left turning. Red is radiation. This is gravitation. Here we have Ra in Abra, Kadabra, right turning, radiation. We have the two co-eternal principles, radiation and gravitation. This they call the proton, this they call the electron. This, the plane of inertia, this is the neutron. But inside every atom is a hyperbola. And we're going to call it the bull. The bull and the tall. Because both of those, a toro, a toro in Spanish, if I can get this out a little bit more, that'll be 
that'll be firmer. I need that to be, that's better. That's better. Okay. That is a bull in Spanish, and that is a bull in English. So we're going to go with red bull and blue bull. Red pill, blue pill. Red blood, blue blood. Red siren, blue siren. Red hot water, blue cold water. Red for little girls, blue for little boys. Roses are red, violets are blue. Republicans are red, Democrats are blue. And the list goes on and on and on because these are the two first colours that come from magnetic white light, which is Atum. Atum stands for one, unity, the number one. And Tom, without the A, is twin. The two twins that come from the atom are red shift, blue shift. You see the, you see the word blue here in bull? Good. Can you see the red here? If you know your German... Ah, oh, I should have left that there. Rot is red. Notice that says tarot and that also says rotate and it also says Torah. Notice that you go and read the Torah and the Bible. So we have all these words that end in Tor and Dor and then we have all these words that end in Bull. Reliable Responsible, viable, plausible, able, Cain and Abel. Now, I don't have to be raising my voice so much, do I? Because I've got this, right? I'm going to save my voice. This time you're talking is perfect. Yeah, okay. So there are more, and this happens in other languages as well. And by the way, I'm going to also do a series of lessons from now on on how to learn uh, the Spanish language. So I'm going to be teaching the Spanish language. At the same time, I'm going to be speak, teaching uh, five languages at once. They're sister languages. English, Spanish, Portuguese, French and Italian. And I'm going to teach you how to learn those languages in three months, all of them. So that's why these three words are very, very powerful because in Spanish that turns out to be ble, responsable. In Italian it's responsabile. In French it's responsable, bleu. But it always turns up at the end of a good percentage of every language that exists. So what I'm doing here is comprehensively and exhaustively giving you the foundations to prove that we have only one language, which is etymology or etymology, and all the other languages, whether it's Tamil, Sanskrit, Greek or Hebrew, they all take second place, or rather, they all are modalities of etymology. And that will be proven beyond any doubt. You already know this. You don't need me to prove this. Once I just point it out to you, then you'll, uh, you'll be the master of this yourself. At first you may laugh. That's fine. You know? Then you'll deny it, and then you'll, you'll be defending it for the rest of eternity because this is how nature works. Atoms make noises. All those little big... The Big Bang, right? There was no Big Bang. There was just endless little Big Bangs. That's called atoms. This is the sound that electromagnetic magnetism makes mostly. There are other sounds, and they are the names of the gods, such as Krishna. It is said that Krishna is the, the original sound. Well, that's true in another system, which we won't go into today. I can show you how Krish, Krishn, Krishn is actually a, an electrical phenomenon. And Krishna is electrical, and so is Buddha, and so is Christ. They are all electromagnetic gods, because there is only electromagnetism. 
So, and, and again, we have many words that end in ton. So, uh, graviton, proton, neutron, that's another variation. Another variation is shon, nation. Believe you me, this is an atomic ending. They are all atomic endings. All endings come from this model of the atom, which is the true model of the atom. And you're going to see how all words come from these three words, how this has generated most of the words that we use in our general language. Okay? So, for instance, when you speak of hyperbola, when you speak in hyperbole, what are you doing? You're exaggerating. Well, that's what this means in Greek. Hyper, bole, means hyper, exaggeration to boost you see bowl bowl means star this is a stargate it's a wormhole that's why you have bolster to bolster something means you are giving it the power of bowl polarity P and B being interchangeable, you also get polarity. Pollux and Castor. Everything is stars. When you came here, you were a young star. Then you became a sister. Then maybe you became a spinster. There's a mister, master, monster, mobster, fraudster, trickster, jester, gangster, Fraudster, movie star, superstar, film star, rock star, pastor, minister, disaster, imposter. We don't like those ones. We don't like imposters. <laughs> we want to be genuine. We want to be masters. But we all have ancestors, ancestros. You see how it's mixed around in Spanish, but it's still there. It's in every language. In every language, we have atomology. So we can't doubt that this star system is how we operate. Our body is like this. So if I show you uh, a graphic here of the body, um, let's go to this page. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've got here is what I'm showing you here is what... Um, what I've put on the, the uh, whiteboard is every system. There's the man. The human being has these fields surrounding him. Notice the apple. Remember in French, the pom, apple, becomes the om, the man. And isn't that interesting that man should be om in French? Isn't that just so interesting? And how come it sounds like home? Because our dom, domicile, dominion, domain, where we live, our home is an om. Just as you are an om without the p. So pom, apple, is always associated with man because of this shape of the torus field here that you can see. The cosmos is in this shape. This shape here, see here, this, this is the earth plane. The earth is the, the, the um, plane of inertia, the planet of Eartha. And this is the dome, Dominus, the Lord. You know, when they had Operation Dominic, just be, before they had Operation Fishbowl, that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to get through this dome here. See that tree? Man is the measure of the universe. If you want to know about the universe, all you need to know is about man. And so we are a tree. We have a torus, which is a tori. We have a lumbar in our spine, which is lumbar. Um, comes from tree, which is the tree of your torus field. And Buddha is the body that sits under the tree 
and meditates and gets inspired. That Buddha is you. And your Tori is generated from the lumbar. And so when you think about the universe's trees, let me go back to the very start now of this presentation. And essentially, what we're learning is this model. This is the Sam Best method. Um, it's syncretic, it's astrological, it's atomological, and that's the model that we use. Those are the three ingredients that the model must consist of. Then we have best, Bonacci, ecliptic, sine wave, toroidal field. I'm using all of those ingredients to explain the, the right model. This is the correct model. Walter Russell will agree with this. Um, Ken Wheeler will agree with this. John Mawelski will agree with this. All the Neoplatonists and quantum physicists will agree with this. Okay? Only that they're not adding all of these um, theological and philosophical words. That's my job. Because in order to do that, you have to be a mystic. And if you are not a mystic, you're just a philosopher or a spiritual person, which is great, you will never be able to penetrate this wisdom and this knowledge. So, but that doesn't mean that people who have a lot of this knowledge um, and don't put all these connections, it doesn't mean that they're not valuable. They are valuable. Remember, everything is Tauruses and bulls. Everything is red-shifted and right-shifted. So what you have here, pole, polarity, makes seven seven colors of the rainbow seven means to sever when white light is severed and here it's represented as green light in the heart heart is earth clearly you can see that and the man has a heart a core like the apple this is an apple, you can see this is a nice little juicy apple looking thing. Every apple has a core. And that is the corazón that is this plane of inertia which extends from your heart plane. Okay, everybody connects radially with longitudinal standing waves heart to heart. That's how you talk to people, through radiation not through vibration. See, I'm, I'm speaking to you through vibration right now. That's the means of communication because you are seeing me in colour and you are hearing me in sound. This is called audio and video. Audio is God and video is also God. God is light. God is sound. So we're dealing in sono luminescence. This is sono luminescence. Atom. And this is why these endings, these words turn up in many, many words. Another ending here is meant. Meant. Can you see that that's an anagram of atom? Right? arrangement, etc. You'll find many, many words in all languages having these endings, bull, tor, and ton. We're going to get into that as we go. I just want to highlight that now at this stage because we're going to go very, very deep. Simple. We're going to keep this very, very simple, but deep. It has to be deep, which produces clarity. Tesla said, many men can, speak, can think deeply, but cannot think clearly. Here we are going to give you clarity by giving you the correct model. If you don't have the correct model, you'll never have the correct method. If you have a bad model like allopathy, well, then you're going to have bad methods like chemotherapy. If you have a good model like homeopathy and naturopathy, then you're going to have good 
models like herbs and fasting and natural the remedies that truly help you. So here, we're all about good model. We're going to have the correct model. Okay? So, let's get down to some nitty gritty. Um, let's explain. Here we explained that Tom means twin. Well, another derivation of, of Tom is den. Because T and D are interchangeable and and so are the vowels. So dem. What does demi mean? Demi. Well it means half. So already you see that in the word atom you have the power of the word one, unity, indivisible, and you have the power of the word two Thomas. And if you do put a an H in there, you'll do well. You'll have a lot more fun. Trust me. Thomas, because you need that H. And I won't get into that now, but there's a reason why that <laughs> that's there. Trust me. Um, so this word is also Adam, because Adam was a demigod. We're all demigods. We're not demons. Demon is also here. Demented is there. Damaged. What happens when you are the race of the damned? Wouldn't you rather be Adam's children? Because a privative takes away the meaning of the word that follows it, such as theist is different to atheist. Right? So a privative actually makes this the blessed race. We are not the damned race. We are told that we are... Um, we are mad, mad, made from mud, made from the dirt, dirt, dirt is a redshift word and it comes from tor, t-i-r, dir, tear, which is another word for mars. One of the stars who creates Mars stars. People who win marathons and martial arts. That's Mars. So he, the, this Mars, actually in Hebrew, Adam is Ma'adin. Ma. Adim. And Adam means red. Redshift. Eve means blue. You see, all the twins, they all mean red and blue. Cain was um, red. Abel was blue. Esau was red. Edom, which means Adam, which means red. Jacob was blue. Moses was red-bearded, part of the Red Sea. Aaron was blue. Adam means red, made from dirt, red dirt. Therefore, Eve means blue. It's a red shift, blue shift universe, folks. So as I've done here, I've put the Tropic of Cancer, the Equator, and the Tropic of Capricorn on a transverse Universal Transverse Mercator Projection Map. I always use that because it's rectangular. So we can take the Earth to be rectangular. Whether you're a flat earther, whether you're a globe, whether you can use the globe, it doesn't matter. As, because the globe, every model has the Tropic of Cancer, the equator in the middle, and the Tropic of Capricorn. It's very important that you divide 
the year like this, and you make this the ecliptic. March the 21st at the equinox, going up to June the 21st solstice, going down to the September equinox where I will be doing a presentation in Cancun, a three-day presentation with, what's her name, the sister? Dr. Marion Bevington. Okay, so in Cancun, folks, I will be doing a presentation there. And that's going to be right there on September the 23rd, from the 21st to the 23rd. That's when I'll be doing my presentation. Then we go down to December 21st, the solstice. So we can make this all nice and easy. What we can do now is we can put the Holy Cross... where it should be, on the solstitial and equinoctial points. So now we have also the daytime cycle here. Because when you're looking at an astrological chart, this is an astrological chart, let me show you how. The ascendant is here, the descendant is here, the MC is here, and the IC is here. So this is 6 a.m., 12 midday, 6 p.m., 12 mid midnight. This is a 24-hour clock. So it's very important when you divide this properly, when you divide this correctly, folks, you will get from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. every morning, you will know what it means to experience Aries energy. If you want to understand what does Aries feel like? How can I get an explanation, a description, a flavour of the energy that Aries represents along the wave? Because every day is a wave. Think about it. You have four parts. Morning, afternoon, night, evening and night. Folks, that is a wave, that's a cycle. Every cycle does this. Every cycle is moist, hot, dry and cold. The morning is moist, the afternoon is hot, the evening is dry, the night is cold. Spring is moist, summer is hot, autumn is dry, winter is cold. A child is moist, a teenager gets hot, someone getting older gets dry, and then when you're old, you get cold. Every cycle, even a four-stroke engine does this. It begins, with, it begins with moisture in the carburetor, then an explosion, heat, then the exhaust valve makes it dry. It takes out all the hot fumes, and then it gets cold, and then compression begins for the new moisture cycle. Every cycle begins with moisture. And, and so the morning, Aries, that first two hours of the day, that's how you define Aries. You can translate that to an Aries individual and you will see it. If you look at your Aries children, you will see that morning sun in them. Taurians, they also have the morning sun, but they are more fixed and more stable. It's a different morning energy. It's, it's more earthy, it's more practical, it's more settled, it's more fixed, because this is a fixed sign. Then Gemini, 10 to 12, this is where things start getting more uh, upbeat and more energy at work is being consumed. Then Cancer, this is generally when people have lunch. This is a break. This is the water of the stomach. The digestion. Cancer rules the stomach. Then from two to four, we have Leo. Leo energy is best described the hottest part of the day. Two to four, the roaring lion. Virgo, things are starting to get dark. This is the virgin, Delilah, who betrays Samson, the sun. Because the sun now is going to get betrayed, 
and every day he dies in the west when he goes beyond the horizon into the darkness. So in astrology, you have all the signs above. They're all daylight signs. These are day people. If you have a lot of planets up here, you're very extrovert in your chart. And everything below the line of the earth, this is called the line of the earth in ancient astrology. Now modern astrologers call it horizon because they've been uh, influenced by Copernicus. Right? So but originally this is the earth. This is where the earth is. And you have to face south. The MC is south. If you want to see the sun right ascending, if you, every day, if you want to watch the sun right ascending, right ascension of meridian, you must face south. The MC south, this is north. This is north. Because if you're facing south watching the sun do this every day, let's say you're in uh, New York City, You've got to face south, facing towards Mexico, and you, you'll see the sun to your left rising, and you will see it right ascending, right ascension of meridian, it's called. Right ascension of meridian. Ram. So... If you want to see this happening every day, you have to face the MC, which is south. And, and that's how you know that this is the stationary Earth, because this line from the ascendant to the descendant never moves. So you can see this as a 24-hour clock rotating once daily, or you can see it as a yearly where all, all the... Um, all the planets are eventually, they're all going like this. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. Virgo, Libra, Libra, Scorpio, Scorpio, Sag, Sag, Capricorn, Capricorn, Aquarius, Aquarius, Pisces, Pisces. So the year is going this way. You see the Ouroboros? Ouroboros. BOL becomes BOR. That's the Ouroboros. That's the serpent eating its tail. Every day, the serpent eat its, eats its tail. This here is the Holy Grail. This is the obelisk. Bell. This is the false god, god Baal. This is Cristobal. Why does Bal go with Cristo? Because it's a crystal ball. You are a crystal ball. You have crystal aura around you. You are Christ. So that's why Bal is a very, very important word. In Tamil, Tam, all is a Tam. They say it's the most ancient language. In Tamil, hyperbola is called Mahabali. Bali, the big, uh, the big, power, I think, oh my, 
Where did I put that? I can't believe I missed it. Where am I? Oh, I'm lost! Oh, well. Um, where I where I had the word Mahabali. It was just a bit of writing. There's only a few lines. Here it is. Okay, so Mahabali means get this superpower. Remember, we said hyperbola in Greek, hyperbola means super thrust. That's why you get ballistic missiles, bullets. This is the bull's eye. Uh, that's why you need to read Bible and the Torah. Everything is bulls and Tauruses. But to, why, why don't they have the cow's eye? What's wrong with the cow? Why? I mean, uh, well, or, or rabbit's eye. Why is the center of the target always called the bullseye? Because they know that this is a hyperbola. The hyperbola is the, the obelisk which has always been adored. Bell, obelisk. Right? Another way of saying hyper, hyperbola, if remember L and R are interchangeable, what about hyperborea? Hyperborea. That's the North Pole. Well, that's the North Pole of the system we live in. This is the flat Earth. Here. Let me make it circular. There's the flat Earth. This is Mount Meru in the middle. I'm going to show you a video right now. And I'm going to show you first and foremostly the true, how to tell the true model of the universe just by watching a short video with me. And you will see, and now from here I will explain how all of this, how the sun, the Tropic of Cancer is up here, Tropic of Capricorn is down here, and how the sun, as it explains in Srimad Bhagavatam, it goes up a ramp, to the Tropic of Cancer and then down to the Tropic of Capricorn where on January 4th it is perihelion. It is closest to the Earth, the Sun, that is, on January 4th every year, perihelion. This day here, aphelion, July 4th, are you listening? July 4th is the day the sun is furthest away from the earth at the Tropic of Cancer. And that's why America was founded in the Tropic of Cancer. That's why they went to the moon in the sign of Cancer. It was June the, 20, the 18th that they left. They had to leave right, you know, um, at the end of, uh, at Cancer. And they landed in, uh, when the moon was in Libra. They landed on the moon in their world. We know that that never happened in the real world. We know that that is pure Walt Disney production. But why are they doing these things? Well, because they know that July, around that time, this is very, very, very special, aphelion, in every system that you study, whether it's flat earth, or Copernican, the sun is furthest away from the earth at the Tropic of Cancer than it is at the Tropic of Capricorn. And it is explained here in Bhagavad Gita that there is a ramp. This, there is, a, there is a, like a road here and the sun goes around like a, on, with steeds on a chariot. It goes around this wall and then, and then it climbs back up to the Tropic of Cancer. And we're going to see a video of this right now, folks. So we go over to me and we go to TikTok. Okay, let's go to the second. You can see the sun is moving down again. 
not and want that in big. Come back around and get the camera rotating. How do I get that to do good big? Okay. No, you used to go big. Oh, that's the one. Alright, guys. Can they hear that? No. And here, it's not going down, it's coming back around. Notice that the camera is moving 360 Have a look at this sun. This okay, is five days of watching the sun. You can see the sun is moving down again and getting smaller, but coming back around again. Notice that the camera rotating. 360 degrees, second day. We're on to our third day. So if you look at this, this proves that it's a flat Earth. The sun's getting smaller again, coming back around. This is near the Arctic. Now, if this was a, if the globe theory held true, this is near where the access point of the globe would, globe would be. So the sun should not, you shouldn't have to rotate the camera at all, really. Um, you can see the sun getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's a local sun, about 3,000 miles away. Once again, the Arctic is near the access point on the globe. Therefore, you shouldn't have to spin the camera 360 degrees per day. But here, this proves it. It does. Not only take note of the fact that the size of the sun gets bigger as it's coming towards noon, and then look, it's going to get smaller. Guys, wake up and share. All right, here's an IOMAR video. This is a five-day time lapse up in the Arctic. Okay, you see the sun? But, but you can put it in, can't you? Yes. All right, that's fine. Yeah. All right, all right, guys. I'm going to have to do this again because... I, there's so much to explain here. Please understand. What's going on here is this camera is tracking the sun for five days straight and the sun has not set. It's not setting. This is in the Arctic. This is in the north. Very, very, very high. This can only happen when the sun is in the Tropic of Cancer. This does not happen all year round. They have to wait for July to do this up there in Norway. But if you are intelligent and you're using your own mind without any demons interfering, interfering or any PhDs or any preconceived beliefs that you have, you will see that we are living on a stationary earth. You can teach this to a kindergarten child quite easily. If the earth were turning, the camera would not have to track the sun. You would just leave the camera on the tripod and the earth would turn and the earth itself would follow the sun. But it's not. It's the camera standing on a stationary earth, which is not moving, following and tracking the sun. Please watch this once more. It's going to go down. It's getting smaller. It gets smaller. And here it's not going down. It's coming back around. Notice that the camera is moving 360 degrees. One day has passed. Okay, it's going to the second day. You can see the sun is moving down again and getting smaller, but coming back around again. Notice that the camera rotating. 360 degrees. Second day. We're on to our third day. So if you look at this, this proves That's that the it's camera. Flatter. The sun's getting smaller again, coming back around. This is near the Arctic. Now, if this was a, if the globe theory held true. This is near where the access point of the globe would, globe would be. So the sun should not, you shouldn't have to rotate the camera at all, really. Um, you can see the sun getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's a local sun, about 3,000 miles away. Once again, the Arctic is near the access point on the globe. Therefore, you shouldn't have to spin the camera. All right, that'll do for now. So. Yeah. The edited version. It don't have to, because when they're watching it, it'll be edited in. No, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be edited in for them to see later on. So we're going to do another. No, we're not going to do anything again. It's just that that wasn't visible in the live, but it's going to be available for them to see. Yeah. Okay. So, show. folks, you 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 didn't see what I just what what I just showed was um, a five day sun not setting in the Arctic. And the camera was following the sun, tracking the sun. If the earth were moving, you just need to leave the camera alone and the earth would move and follow the sun. Think about it. This proves we're living on a stationary earth. But the other reason why I wanted to show this 
is because it's very important to understand the model in which we live. So I'm going to move over to another whiteboard right now and I want to describe our true system, how it works. Ever. And that's why you didn't see Mount Meru as the sun was going round and round. So the bottom of the earth is similar. So what we have here is we have the Tropic of Cancer here. We have the Tropic of Capricorn here. And we have in the middle the equator. And then we have a ramp. This is Mount Meru. This is Mount Sinai. Mount Zion. Mount Olympus. The Mount of Olives. See, Jesus Christ, the son, the little goat who is born in Capricorn, 25th uh, of December, Capricorn, that's where the Tropic of Capricorn is. He has to climb up to the mountain of Jerusalem to be transfigured on the 6th of August, yesterday. Because it's at the Tropic of Cancer. So this is, this is the mountain that one must climb. The pilgrimage that everything makes. The goat has to climb to the crab. And then the scarabus, the crab, must go down the mountain again. It's going up and down, up and down all year long. That's why this is where Aries begins. And Aries always belongs here. Taurus always belongs here. And Gemini always belongs here. Then Leo. Uh, sorry, Cancer. Leo. Virgo. Libra. Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces in here. So every year the sun is doing this breath. It's making a vortex. It's making a breath. Brahma is breathing. And that's why the 21st, that's when Aries begins. Regardless of procession of the equinoxes and, and whether Aquarius is there now and Pisces was there for 2,000 years, regardless, this never moves. This is the system of how our year works. It doesn't matter whether you live in the Southern Hemisphere and you're born in March. I was born in March in the Southern Hemisphere. It doesn't make me a Libra. Because we didn't have spring, we had autumn when I was born. I was still, I'm still an Aryan. You can see I'm an Aryan because this is what dominates. This is how it's all dominated. It's dominated by this breath of the sun. And as the sun goes up these ecliptics and goes down, it changes its frequency along the way.
Okay. So this is Mount Meru. This is our system. Um, if someone can get me, please, that little cloth so I can clean this and do another thing. My little cloth, little rag of what? Oh, oh, sorry, I've got it in my hands. Excuse me. So from top view, this is what you've got, folks. This is the Earth. This is the North Pole. This is the Arctic. This is the Tropic of Cancer. This is the Equator. This is the Tropic of Capricorn. This is Antarctica. Okay, so let's go red for the equator. This is the northern hemisphere, so America will be here. We are in Mexico. Here is South America. This is the northern hemisphere, everything here. All right. This is the Southern Hemisphere. It's easy. People ask, oh, how do time zones work? How come the moon is upside down when you're in the Southern Hemisphere? Please, folks, remember, these things are local. The moon is local. Of course, if the moon is over here, say, at the Tropic of Cancer, and I'm in Australia down here, of course, I'm looking at the moon Someone from here will see it upside down. They will see like a light in your ceiling. If I'm over here, I'm looking at the light in the ceiling. I see it from this perspective. But if I go to the other side of the room and look back at the light, I will see it upside down. People get so confused and so they block, they get a block. Oh, well, why is the moon upside down in Australia? Well, it's easy to explain on the correct model. Everything is easy to, to explain. Why you can't see Polaris from Australia. It's all easy to explain. All of it. I'm not going to go there right now, but you have to do all this science correctly and you must have the correct model. This is how, the, this is how it works. And this here, the Tropic of Cancer. And what happens is the ecliptic is another thing. The ecliptic goes from the Tropic of Capricorn to the Tropic of Cancer, like this. That's another thing altogether. That's the ecliptic, people. So, so it goes through the equator. This will be March 21st. This will be June... No, that, this is December. That's Capricorn. What am I talking about? This is December. 21st, the solstice. This is Libra, December 22nd, 23rd, uh, sorry, September. And here is June, the solstice, 21st, March 21st. Here's another way for all you astrologers who think the moon is a rock and you are using and you think the earth is a globe, <coughs> I, um, <coughs> I accuse you in history as false prophets. So this recording will be recorded millions of times over, and I want all astrologers to record this here, where I am officially now condemning all Jesuit Copernican astrologers who think the earth is a globe. You are satanic liars. You are demon worshippers. You are false. I will belittle you. I will expose you. I will shame you. I will debate you. And I'll prove you forever to be monkeys and fools and idiots and morons. You can't even explain how the moon disappears. You think it's a rock because you believe in Copernicus and your earth Santa ball. Why the moon disappears for three days 
at the new moon. Well, astrology tells you why. Astrology says that anything which enters within 15 degrees of the sun becomes what's called burnt, under the rays of the sun, invisible. Astrology has the answer again. No Copernican astrologer does. So I accuse here publicly and condemn to a court of justice forever all Copernican false prophets. You're all liars. You're all Jesuit coadjutors. And the lie of the globe began in 1542. Copernicus was a Jesuit. Galileo Galilei was a Jesuit. Newton was a Jesuit. And Einstein was a Jesuit. And you are all Jesuit coadjutors. And you are liars, all of you, even you Hindu astrologers who think that the earth is a go, uh, is a, a, a Bugola. I, I saw an, a Hindu astrologer, I won't mention his name because I respect him, and he's going out saying, we know the earth is a globe because Srimad Bhagavatam says Bugola. No, it says Bumandala. Bugola is the apple. That's the ball. Bu, yes. Uh, I mean, um, gola, yes, means ball. But in Srimad Bhagavatam, it says that we live on Jambudweep, which is a bumandula, a flat earth. So I will um, finish with my condemnation of all you false prophets called astrologers who are Copernicans who think you live on a spinning Santa ball. This is the true Ptolemaic model. Ptolemy, Firmicus Maternus, Betius Valens, Gallen, Manilius, they will be rolling in their graves at your stupidity that you have fallen for such an evil and disgusting, filthy teaching as the global agenda globe, the false idol of all Satanists. All astrologers who teach we live on an earth, uh, on a, on a, on a uh, globe earth, are satanic liars. That's all you are. And you're hurting yourself due to your stupidity because the earth is clearly stationary. It's not moving. Hey? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm going to give them heaps. They are condemned forever. I hope someone out there, everyone who knows how to do video clipping, Edit it and make videos of this and spread it by the billions that all Copernican astrologers who don't follow this tropical astrology, according to Ptolemy, they are all satanic liars because this is the only system that works perfectly and I've proven it time and time and time and time again in my presentations. If you haven't watched those presentations, that's your problem. It's been proven. You've been left behind. You've got your panties pulled down and we can see your little bits. And they're very, very tiny. Okay. So this is how it works. And that's why, here's another thing. I will expose all you false Copernican astrologers in one hit. How can you explain this? How can you explain that Aries rises crooked and fast? It rises in one and a half hours. And it rises like this on the horizon. Whereas Libra, its opposite, rises direct and slow. It takes two hours and 40 minutes to rise. If the stars are truly, we're living on a globe, a spherical globe, perfectly sphere, spherical, and the stars are all way, 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 way out there, Aries wouldn't be rising crooked and in an hour and a half. And Libra wouldn't be rising straight if they weren't local and if the ecliptic was not like this. This is the ecliptic. You see, that's why if you're over here in America, you see uh, Aries... You see Aries, you'll see him rise quickly, right? Because he is close, he is, um, his angle that he is coming to is, is local. So it's, uh, you know, it's like a roof. And, and the way Aries comes through 
from your perspective, is very, very angular. And it comes quickly because the ecliptic is distorted in that area. Okay? You can never explain this with a globe. I'm going to do this properly one day, but now's not the time. Now we want to go back to our DNA and abracadabra. I really did have to give the uh, Jesuit Copernican false astrologers a plug there. To all you uh, Jesuit globies out there, hats off to your stupidity. You're all false prophets and um, you deserve to be... It's time to not let the lying uh, deceivers be tolerated anymore, folks. It's time to expose them. It's time for leaks, exposure, the apocalypse, the Armageddon, the revealing. It's time to expose the lies. This is how to do it. This is the only system that does it comprehensively, exhaustively, and correctly, most important. Oh, wow. No, but we started late, didn't we? What time did we start? I want to do this two hours. We're an hour and 15 minutes. An hour and 15 minutes? Great. I need a lot more time. Okay. In Hindu, Bal, Bali means baby. See, these are little babies. Let's start this again. I'm having fun. You guys having fun? See this, I've done this a few times. Okay, always do the divider. This is either the plane of inertia or the equator, Depend, depending on which, you, which wave you're talking about, the year or the day. All right, doesn't matter. That line is always in the middle. At the top will always be the Tropic of Cancer. At the bottom will always be the Tropic of Capricorn. Here is where Aries begins, June, September, December, March, June, September, December. That's how I'm going to do things from now on. Um, because that way I can get to play with my Taurus field over here. And we have a right turning, right turning, radiating red shift proton. All those words. Proton. Remember all the words that end in ton? Well, if you put a Y here, you will understand what a proton is. Fire. Piro. Radiation. Ra. The big G over here, gravitation. That's the big G. Gravitation, implosion energy. This is the implosion cycle of Schalberger. He, he uses this cold electricity. The world is using this radiation, dirty energy. They're using this kind of explosion. This is explosion, this is implosion. This is fusion, this is uh, uh, fission. Uh, fusion, this is fission. So hydrogen is going out and becomes pluton, and then pluton is going back to hydrogen. Everything comes from here. This is the point of counter space, the bowl. Bala. Is how you say Krishna Bala, Bala Krishna. Same as Cristobal. B 
Bala means divine in Persian. Abal means apple in Proto Celtic. Ba Abal, and that's Abel, Cain and Abel. So we always come back to Baal being an apple. Um, but it also, it also means everything else. Um, it means divine. It means that explosion. Um, it's the world of... You can put a V there as well. Vol, instead of bowl. Volume. Love. See, this, this, gives, this is the heart. If to evolve, you need to revolve. You must do a lot of revolutions. This is, everything is rotating. Rot in German, of course we said, is red, yeah? Rotterdam, the red city. But Tor, Torah, that's turning. So it's the same with atom. You've got motor, matter, mother. Motor is a very important word. It's got tom and tor in it. These are motors. You see? So not only will you um, find your will, volition, this is where volition comes from. This is volatile to fly. This has the, the human genitalia. Vulva. Val. Vulva. Labia. Lab. Lab. L-A-B. Labia. You can see it here. This is the phallus. Phallus comes from Baal. That's why Baal is the false god. Because this is all false. It's electrical. Anything electrical is false. This house is false. My body is false. Everything you see is false. It's by the, it's, it's by the, the, the doer of evil, good and evil, which is shortened to devil. Right? The doer of good gets shortened to God. But, but it's still God and the devil. The devil's red always. But Krishna's always blue. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean that red is bad. It's just that red, when you look at the spectrum of, of frequencies of the electromagnetic spe spectrum, which makes nature you'll see that red is what makes bricks and buildings and everything like that. And ultraviolet makes spiritual thinking and, and emotions. So red is always associated with the frequency which is the most densest of all the lights and frequencies which make things coagulate and matter. That's why Satan is attributed to this. You see? There's nothing... There's nothing uh, theologically scary in, in, in the Bible or any of these books. They're just making a comparison here. But nothing is really... You can't throw this out without this. There can never be just redshift universe. Immediately, when God's thinking begins, it goes redshift, blue shift. Immediately. First red. Remember, Esau was red. He, he had the red string tied. To him, he was the firstborn. He was supposed to be the firstborn. Red Moses is, is red. He's the firstborn, or, or not the firstborn, but he took the lead. Red is always the leader, <clears throat> and then blue always follows. But you've still got this polarity of the red pill, the blue pill. Huh? It's always going to be like that. Even your police sirens. What other colour would they have? Green and yellow. It doesn't work. You know. Here comes a green and yellow siren. But when you see red and blue, it's like, 
it confuses you. Because blue is like, oh, I'm your mother. I'm warm and watery and I want to cuddle you. And then red's like, got you, you little criminal prick. Right? And that's what the police want to do. They want that. And then a siren to stop you thinking. I can't think, I can't think. This noise, this noise, this noise. So they come in and they've got all the control. But this is what they use. Republicans are red, Democrats are blue. Neither of them gives a shit about you. So why do we go and vote? See, this is also the bar. Bar. I should be doing the bar words in blue because they are blue shift words. R and L are interchangeable. So this is the bar. You see the people who work for the bar? They also work for the crown, Kronos. Kronos means time. Kronos means time. And this is the hourglass of time. So when people say, I work for Kronos, uh, the crown, they're telling you that they work for Kronos, Satan, Saturn, but they also work for the bar. They are the rabbis that work at the bar. And this bar is Abra. Abra. Kadabra. To open. Abra means open. So, what, why the do we... Warriors have to pass the bar. Huh? Warriors have to pass the bar. I have to pass the bar. Yeah, to, this... speak that, to speak the hidden language. That's right. They have to know about the bar. That's why they always have the cross. They always have their symbols. Because... They know that this is all this is talking about. All this is talking about is Atum, Bull, and Tor. And that's it. There's nothing else to talk about because everything is electromagnetic. So if you go to church to learn a philosophy, you're learning about electromagnetics because nothing else exists. If you go to school to do a course on cooking or whatever, you're learning about electromagnetics. Because there's nothing else to talk about, because that's all that's going on. Electromagnetic waves. Magnetism are radial waves, radiation. Electricity are transverse vibratory waves. Electricity, red shift, blue shift. Radiation, vibration. Vibration gets the bad rap because vibration comes from vibora. Vibora is the serpent. We say viper. But it's the same as vibration. Vibra. Because everything is little serpents. When you have a good DMT trip or LSD, I've seen it many times on LSD, I've seen all the little serpents, little snakes, everything's little snakes, mushrooms. Peyote. <laughs> you always see these little snakes, right? Well, because you're now in the transcendental world, you can see these things now. You get to see this vibora, the world of the vibora, the vibration. But beyond that world is the world of the radiation. And that is the door. O, oh, the rod. See, this is also a rod. Tor also means rod. <laughs> but it's also door. In Japanese, dori is road. It's the road. It's Dorothy on the yellow brick road. And 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 it's it's also road in English. Look at that. R O D. Road. In backwards, dori road in Japanese. So whether you want to read it in Japanese, rodi, or road in English, it's still a road. But this, because this is the road. See? So, ba gives you this abra. Oh, that was there already. Okay. Abra. And this is, in Italian, your lips are called labra.
But in Spanish, a word is a palabra. Because that's the pal. That's the bal. That's the bell. It's the world where you believe in lies. Bell. And that's why all these bad words like Jezebel, the witch, Babylon. Bull, Babylon, Jabulon, Bull. Shambhala, Kabbala, Kabba, you go to the Kabba to worship Allah. The Kabba is the cube. The Bala is the ball. There's only cubes and balls. That's it. The universe makes spheres and cubes. But the thing is, the cubes are in counter space. You don't see the cubes. So your body is stuck in a box. It's like a prison, you know? A cardboard box. And your body's in it. And everywhere you go, every movement you make, that box in counter space, Saturn's framework for your torus field to operate in, within, it is a square cube. You will not see, you will not see magnetic dielectric squares in creation because they're invisible. They're in counter space. All you'll see here is balls uh, or things that have torus fields like your body. If, you, if, you, if I could see all of your, the glory of your body, not just this fleshly part, I would see a lot more. I would see a lot more structure in the electromagnetic spectrum. It would be infinite. All right. So. Huh? Oh, that's good. We've got plenty of time then. Good, because I've got a lot more, more stuff to do. All right, so let's have a look at... Um, so, in Hindu... No, hang on. In Hindi, it, this also me means baby and to light a fire. These are little stars. See, so I don't know if I said it before, but a star... Why do I always do this? I'm so dyslexic. A star is nothing but a torus. Look at that. It's the same word. Can, can you see it mixed, mixed, mixed around? And what's a torus? Well, it's an atom. And what's an atom? Well, it's a sine wave. It's an Ouroboros. It's a serpent eating its tail. It's the serpent intertwined at the Garden of Eden. This is the, the tree of the Garden of Eden. And this is the plane of Eden. This, this is, no one can argue with this. You can't argue with this and say, no, this is not the model, because we, we've only got one. There is only one model. It's the atom. And the atom is, this is the atom. Provably, this is the atom. I'm going to go into uh, way, way deeper run considerations of this. Um... All right, can you see that one? You're sharing that one? All right, well, that's Stan Tennant's apple. As you can see, the plane of inertia in the middle, that is, that's the earth. And if you look at his presentation called Dance of the Hebrew Letters, you will see how he calls this the plane of the earth. And his little device here where he puts his thumb, uh, which creates, here it is, where he puts his hand in this, um, this here produces all the Hebrew letters. In fact, you can see this is, I think this is um, uh, Bet. I think this is the letter Bet here. Let me check that. It doesn't say, but anyway. But see all these hourglass tauruses? This is time, Kronos. This is the bar and the people who work for the bar and the crown. See, he's put 
Stan Turner has put that device, which comes from a segment of an apple, in his hand, and he shows when he moves his hand in the video Dance of the Hebrew Alphabet, he explains all this apple flat earth system, just as I'm doing it. It's the same, same thing. There it is, more like Walter Russell, plane of inertia, two vortices. There's the hyperbola. It's always there, bowl. You take away the hyper, get rid of that, and just always concentrate on bowler, bowl, bowl. Bowl or bore, hyperborea, because the R and the L are the two most important, I can't stress enough, interchangeables that exist. See, there is the torus field in every field. In earth, it's a volcano. In water, it's a whirlpool, pool. See, going back to here, what have we got here? Pole becomes pool. It becomes loop backwards. It becomes lap. Everything is doing laps. That all comes from this pole. This is the most, this is the star of the show, the bull's eye. This is where we need to concentrate our study of the Torah into the bull, the Bible. These words are so sacred. They always mean the same thing in every language. So when you look over here at the air, you have a tornado, tor. I used to have a car called Torana. When I was growing up, it was a muscle car with a Chevy motor, 308 Chevy, with Rochester carburetors. It was, a, it was a muscle car. And it was called Torana. And guess what it means in Aboriginal? Fast wind. And my car was fast, because I love fast. It was a muscle car, Chevy. It was like my, my um, um, Corvette. I couldn't get a Corvette. So I settled for my Torana. I was into muscle cars. Water, look at the fire. Even the fire, they're called Twister. Can you see Tur, Stir? Look at the star. Can you see that? These are all Stir, Taurus words, guys. Tree, look what a tree consists of. A Tori, a Torunk, and a root, which is Tor backwards. So Tor is the root of everything. You see how you have to think? You must think backwards as well, in reverse. Why is this hourglass inside the wings of the sun, the disk of the sun, which is the timekeeper, which is the centre, because this is the centre, the hyperbole, of every donut, Taurus field. And there it is, under the Pythagorean triangle of 108 degrees. There is the man with his core, his apple core. And see where they put the earth plane? They put it too low. It should be up there on the green chakra. It shouldn't be where the um, sacral chakra is. This is how Manly P. Hall has, has it. But this, this is um, incorrect. It has been elevated to the half chakra. The earth is now a higher plane. It's, it has changed. This was once one... Um, system. But see, everything is this, guys. When you look out there and see galaxies, that's all you're seeing. Seeing this, you're seeing this is the central sun, Mount Meru at the North Pole, and this is the Earth's plane with all its weather. These are all stars and clouds and whatever else, atmosphere. This is all the flat Earth here. This is probably not just, this is probably just a dig digital thing and it's not even real at all, but it's like this. Okay? Everything is apples and trees. And that's, this is the flat earth. That's the earth there, Tonatiuh, the sun god and the earth god. These are the four elements. And then you have all the rings of Saturn. So here you've got the moon's rings, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Sun, Jupiter, Saturn. And then there's the zodiac on the outside, the zodiac. And this is the same as the Ptolemaic system. The Ptolemaic system and the Jewish system with the ten Sephiroth, this is how it is. That's all the Aztec calendar is, folks. There's the hypertro hypertrochoid, which is the hyperboloid, 
and here it is the same plane of the earth is the plane of inertia the planet of earth here is electromagnetism as a tattoo in the new zealand system here is ken wheeler's picture of the plane of inertia and the hyperboloid going in the middle notice how animals have this too the plane of inertia of every animal is going straight through the center of their bodies here is jagannath krishna is that not magnetism see all the gods are magnetic guys i'm doing this to show you that krishna is simply there in the magnetic field it's all magnetism everything is magnetism there is jagannath here is another picture of electromagnetism here is another one read this this is the metatronic and the christic spiral the fibonacci spiral as opposed to the christic spiral and you'll learn a bit there on your own here's how the ancients depicted the um the serpent of the milky way galaxy eating its own tail surrounding the flat earth there it is in encyclopedia britannica the firmament the solid dome of the heaven the vault of heaven there it says the vault of heaven red shift blue shift it's always red and blue because that's the demiurge jesus is the demiurge i don't know why i have these pictures um, the bell is the bull yes correctly bail it's the bull you can see the bell is a timekeeper every church has a bell in its turret there's always a bell and a tower a tor and a bull in every church here's walter russell's depiction of it he says everything is circles cubes and spheres cubes and spheres and this is how the wave function works here it is pulses radiation and redshift blue shift waves electricity vibration that's a wave cycle this is how everything works folks energy is like this here's frank chester with his bell he discovered the bell the chester hedron it's a bell that's why the bell is such a famous shape it is the sixth polyhedra frank chester which who will be speaking at our academy he discovered this bell please study frank chester and the chester hedron please do yourself a favor Look at the Ouroboros, the serpent, eating the time. You see, because that's the energy of the serpent electricity. It is a demon. It is a demigod. Here is the laminate in the shape of a cross. This is your, the glue of your body. Your body is in a cross. Your body is made up of crosses. Laminate. these are all the fields that surround your body you can study those colors and their powers hey see these are the trees let me look at this tree right let's have a look over here back at our original words folks <clears throat> just so that i'm not laboring this point let's go on again and again and again <clears throat> hey Okay. So we have atom, bull, and tall. These are the three words. Um, atom, bull, and tall. So. D E N. What's a dend? A dendros. In 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 Greek, dendros is a tree. You have in your brains you have dendrites. Den, den, Adam. Adam, the Garden of Eden. See, so you get tree from that word. You get tree from here, bowl, arbol, 
and you get three from here because you've got a story. You know, I mean, you, you, you don't have to say the bow. It's clear. It's quite clear. That's a tree. Mike, it's Joe. Mm. Ah, stationary earth. So, you see how all these words, sometimes, they all mean the same things. These all mean star. I can show you that this all means star. I can show you how they all mean man. Bull. Caballero. That's the male toilet here in Spain. The female toilet is damas. You see, because Adam... Adam is a madam. Aiden is a maiden. Don, Don Juan, is a donna. The lad is a lady. So, I can show you that these words mean man, tree, which is how electricity perpetrates like trees. It looks like trees. If you go up 40,000 in a plane and you look at the valleys, you'll see like trees. If you go in with a microscope with a brain surgeon to look at your brain and look at the dendrites, they look like trees. Everything looks like trees. It's electricity. Um, <clears throat> yeah, great. So, what else can it mean? Well, it can mean time. It is time. Atom means time. It can mean tone, music. Tone, tune, note, musical note. It's a universe of time. Even ten. Tempo. You have to keep tempo when you're dancing. Ten, ten, it all means time. Atom means time. It means tree. It means Adam, man. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, I've only just begun to scratch the surface. Every word in every language, I don't care whether you're Tamil, and you're telling me that Hebrew's first, Greek's first, they're all lining up trying to tell me that theirs is the first original, the Irish, the Gaelic. Oh, but the Gaelic, this is the first original language, it's from Atlantic. No, 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 no. There's this, then there's languages that come from that. Only that can come from this, because they can only come from electromagnetism, because there is only electromagnetism in existence. That's all that exists, electromagnetic waves. Thought waves, sound waves, uh, emotion waves, light waves, it doesn't matter. They all start in Aries and they all end in Pisces. So the reason why the Sam Best Method is the best method is because it teaches how to understand the electromagnetic wave properly. First you have to understand that morning energy of the sun at 6 o'clock, Aries, that's how every wave starts, an injection of light, bang, plasma. Because plasma is another word that comes from pole. Plasma, okay? All right? Pulse. It's a pulse. It all comes from the hyperbola. Plasma is the material world. It's electric. That's electricity. It's another way of saying electricity, in my opinion. And it comes from the ether, which is nothing other than
Black light, rest. White light, motion. Rest and motion. Force and motion. Inertia and acceleration. This is inertia, rest, and acceleration. It's not it's the opposite of force. And inertia is the opposite of motion. So this black light is rest, which is crest, which is Christ. That's why Christ is always black. Nagual and tonal, ton. Here we have tonatio, tonansin. All the gods, they're already atomic here. It's, you don't have to, I don't have to prove anything about atomology in Mexico. Mexico has more syncretism. It's the most syncretic uh, land in the world because the Aztecs and the Mayans, they understood each other. They had different calendars, but they didn't fight. They understood each other. They knew that they had a different system, but it's all this. So when, when, when this, Krishna and Radharani, dielectricity and magnetism, when they begin to generate waves, they then make this. They make this. Red shift, blue shift. Which you, which you will see on the South Korean flag. And you'll also see to the side of the South Korean flag, you will see the... Um, you'll see the four elements, earth, fire, air and water. So here you have water, here you have fire. Here you have air, blue, here you have earth, red. Adama, in Hebrew, means red earth. Adam, or Ma'adim, means red man. In Hindu, you do your Dharma. Yeah, that's the work that you've come here to do is called your dharma. You carry your karma, but you do your dharma. And the dharma wheel is what? The eight spoke wheel, the chakana. Equinoxes, solstice, cross quarter days, Halloween, Groundhog's Day, May Day, Loth Mass Day. And these are the, four, the eight portals of the Dharma wheel. They call this, the Hindus call this the Dharma wheel. Everything is Adam. As the Egyptians said, all is our tomb. The sooner we understand that all is Atum, 10 minutes, the sooner we understand uh, the true nature of the universe. We're going to do some questions, perhaps? Yeah, sure. Mm. Oh, you, go, you, you guys, if you've got questions, shoot ahead. Hey guys, submit your questions and uh, we'll have Santos answer them for you. Is this where the black sun comes from? The black sun? Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit... Um, 
confused about that because there's many ways of seeing the, the black sun. First of all, but Rahu was known as the black sun. Secondly, I know for a fact that the sun behind the sun that we see is a black sun. And thirdly, I know that there is another black sun under the earth. That's how our uh, scriptures describe one of the black suns anyway. I think that's what they call the iron core. Um, it's impossible for a flying ball to have an, a hot moving iron core anyway, so that discounts uh, a moving globe for sure, for sure, no doubt about it, if you're intelligent. But um, the black sun, I would say, is... Um, when, you, when you look at Ken Wheeler's work, you'll always see, uh, in, in the torus field, you'll see uh, lots of white light going around looping, and then you'll see black light as well in the middle of that, black lights in, their, in, in the looping. Okay, so those black lights, those are going back into the hole, into the sinkhole, counter space, those white lights, they are coming out. They are radiation. So it's radiation and gravitation. So I believe that the sun, the disk that you see of, of, of the sun, that's on the other side, that's, that's black. And um, with the tricks of magnetics in the sky, that's how I believe the sun actually makes night time. It's, I'll need another hour to explain that, but within the sun there's, there is both, there's both radiating on this side, making radiation, and on the other side it is, has to pull, it has to be fed. So that's the black side, that's where everything disappears. And on the other half of the sun there's the black, and, and, and the black light's going in to feed it, and white light is gushing out. It's a portal, and it's two-sided. It's always, it always, everything works like that. One energy cannot give without taking from another energy. It's, they're borrowing all the time. Um, you, you can tell them a little bit about Saturn's ring, if you know anything about it. Okay. I can, yes, I can say a little bit about Saturn's ring. So Saturn is a disk as well, it's, it's just another portal, but it has rings around it. So, and those rings, they're pretty interesting because um, this is proof that Saturn is beginning to crystallize a plane of inertia. This is the plane of inertia because this is the, that's the axis. According to David Lapointe in his documentary um, Prima Fields, he says the reason why you can see the small rings of Saturn is because it is perfectly 90 degrees, 90 degrees, in line the axis with its rotational axis whereas Jupiter is is wobbling so he said Jupiter has according to him Jupiter has a much bigger rings around it than Saturn does but because all the other planets are wobbling and they're not as steady as Saturn you cannot see this so clearly here Saturn is building a plane of inertia which will become an earth one day and then what will happen is it will divide and then it will become a dome like our Earth and it will all work like the same, the same system It's going to work. Saturn is actually, you know, a system of, of its own making itself. And you can see it's, it's building its body, its plane of inertia. That's what I think the rings are. All right, guys, so that's about it for lesson two. I hope that helps. Uh, as you see, all I've done was the same thing again. I always get my universal transverse Mercator projection map, and I make 
all the cycles become one. The year, the day, the minute, the second. And then I turn that into hyperbola with a torus field surrounding it and show how astrologically um, everything comes from that and all languages, etc. So I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for part three because get, it gets better and deeper and more and more interesting. Thank you.